In this video, I'll show you how to create this scrolling buttons row for your dashboard. First a little disclaimer, this doesn't look great on desktop dashboards because scroll bars are displayed. But on mobile I think it looks great, and that is where I use my dashboard. As always, if you can't be bothered with typing in the code, you can get it from the Gumroad link in the description. I'm going to start with a vertical stack. Then I'm going to add a new custom card to it, we have to manually type in the custom paper buttons row card. For now, I will just add a basic 8px gap between the chips. Then I can start making the first button. I use the predefined icon name layout as a base, and I add a name, icon, and entity. I will then start styling the button. For this, we need to style the name, button, and icon. For the button, I set display to flex, and I give it a solid background color. a border radius of 24px and a fixed height of 34px. The color code changes the text color. I'll get back to that a bit later. The icon code is a little more advanced. We need to edit a CSS variable to change the size of it. Also, the positioning is a little tricky. So we have to define width, height, display, justify content, and align content. I also give it a solid black background color and a border radius. But then we also need to edit the color back to white. Lastly, a tiny negative left margin to push it into the correct place. Then I just give the name a small padding left and right. For the sake of this video, I just change the entity to a boolean helper instead of the door. Just so I don't lock and unlock the door 100 times when setting up tap action in state styling. So I set tap action to toggle. That will turn on and off whatever entity you have added. Could be a door, a light, a fan, or whatever. Then I add state styles. In this example, I will only style the on state. Off will be what we have already done. Pretty simple, but I'm adding a gradient variable that I have in my theme to the background. But you could just use a solid color if you want to. Then the name should turn black, icon background white, and the icon itself black. And you can see now that the button is working when clicking it. That's the first button done, and it will be the base to use when creating more buttons. I'll show a few more examples of cool uses as well. I'm just going to copy this first button and paste it below. It's not so easy to see the preview and the code at the same time, so I'll just try to make some room. This button will just show information about our energy usage, so I can remove tap action and state styles. And instead of the name I will add the state of the entity. We also need to remember to change the layout to icon state. To do this, I use a simple Jinja template to show the state with some text. Edit the style reference from name to state as well. Alright, I'm going to copy this button again and paste it above. This button is going to be similar to the previous one, but I'm just going to change the entity into a solar production entity. The difference here is that I will add a template code to the button display code. This will hide or show the button, depending on the state of the entity we can add an if-else template. In this example, the display will be set to none if the solar production is less than 20 watts. Otherwise, it will be set to flex. We can test the code by setting the less than value to something bigger than the current state. Okay, I'm gonna add one more button. Similar to the last one, but I would like to have the washing machine's remaining time visible if it is turned on. Instead of using a template for the state, we could just add the remaining time attribute itself. I'm going to rewrite the display template to be an on-off template instead. So if the state of the washing machine is on, the display will be set to flex, otherwise it will be set to none. Just so I have some more buttons to work with for this video, I will set it to always be visible. I'm then giving the first button a big margin to the right. Making the button row scrollable is really easy. All we really need to is add an overflow Xcode to the general styling at the top and set it to scroll. And that's it. You can now use this as a base and add whatever buttons you want and need. Like I said in the beginning, it doesn't really look great on desktop. I haven't found a way to hide the scroll bars, but on mobile it looks and works great. And if you've seen my previous video, you probably know that I almost exclusively use my dashboard on a phone. Hope you learned something from this video. I'll have another video out soon. Until then.